At this point, we've learned a lot of carbonyl reactivity. We're familiar with nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon involving either heteroatomic nucleophiles, nitrogen and oxygen compounds, or carbon-based nucleophiles, which tend to be organometallics. We're also familiar with the nucleophilic reactivity of the alpha carbon and carbonyl compounds. And most recently, we've combined these two modes of reactivity to explore aldol reactions. I wanted to pause here and take a moment to apply many of the reactions we've learned in an example synthesis. And our target here is the drug tramadol. So let's try to synthesize tramadol starting from building blocks, starting from starting materials that contain six carbons or less. To start with this, you know, I would look at this molecule and look for, first of all, oxygens or heteroatoms that could have been part of carbonyl groups. One that jumps out immediately is this hydroxyl group here. And we could make this alcohol through a reduction or addition process. Now, a reduction doesn't make sense because this is a tertiary alcohol. We don't have any hydrogens connected to the alcohol carbon. But addition seems promising. And if we had to pick one of the three R groups to add, the aromatic group seems ideal. This would avoid breaking open the ring, which is something we tend to do when planning syntheses. We avoid breaking open rings, if at all possible. So let's think about the starting materials that could be used to form this compound through an addition of some aromatic nucleophile to a carbonyl. Put another way, we want this carbon to be electrophilic in the starting materials and this carbon to be nucleophilic in the starting materials. So just very roughly, we might imagine kind of mechanistically pushing this bond toward this carbon to generate a nucleophile on the carbon highlighted in red and an electrophile on the carbon highlighted in blue. What we would get from that direct electron flow would be unstable intermediates, but we know compounds that are analogs of those intermediates, right? We know that a carbonyl group associated with that carbon highlighted in blue makes it electrophilic. We also know that linking the aromatic ring to a metal let's just say magnesium as part of a Grignard reagent, makes that carbon linked to the metal nucleophilic. So these are some actual molecules, some actual concrete molecules that we could use to synthesize this final product. From here, the synthesis kind of diverges since we need to think about the nucleophile and electrophile separately. Let's deal with the nucleophile first. This is a Grignard reagent, and we know that Grignard reagents can be made from the corresponding halides through an insertion process. So the starting material for formation of this Grignard reagent would be the corresponding aryl bromide with a meta-methoxy group. Now this has seven carbons, but it's pretty clear that we could synthesize this, for example, through a Williamson approach, using the corresponding phenol, as well as base, and an electrophile such as methyl iodide, CH3I. So we're back to six carbons or less in these starting materials, and we've achieved our goal along that dimension. Now we need to think about the electrophile, which at present contains six carbons plus one plus two more, a total of nine carbons. One thing we should notice about this compound is that it is a beta amino ketone. And these can be formed through monish type reactions of the corresponding ketone and iminium ion, which is derived ultimately from a non-enolyzable aldehyde or ketone. In the Monash reaction, like all aldol-type addition processes, the bond that is formed in the forward direction or broken in the reverse direction is between the alpha and beta carbons. So let's imagine breaking that bond in the reverse direction. The alpha carbon acts as nucleophile in the Monash reaction and the beta carbon as electrophile. So in the reverse direction, we're going to push those electrons onto the alpha carbon to think about an enol or enolate intermediate. This leaves a positive charge at the beta carbon, and that's going to get us thinking about an iminium ion intermediate. If we wanted to actually generate that iminium outright, we could even involve the nitrogen in this kind of imaginary or speculative electron flow. The corresponding nucleophile for this Monash reaction would just be cyclohexanone, and the corresponding electrophile would actually be the iminium ion that we generated through our electron flow. But of course, the iminium ion is an intermediate, so we need to think about backing this up into the ketone or aldehyde plus the amine that combine or condense to form this intermediate. The iminium electrophile is formed through the condensation of formaldehyde and dimethylamine here. These two come together to give rise to the iminium ion, 
that shows up in the final product, ultimately. And the nucleophile is just cyclohexanone. And so we've reduced now the electrophilic partner in this Grignard addition reaction to starting materials of six carbons or less. Now let's write out the synthesis in the forward direction. Let's start by elaborating the component that's ultimately going to be the electrophile in the Grignard reaction. We first combine dimethylamine and the electrophile formaldehyde, which I'm going to abbreviate as H2CO, in the presence of an acid catalyst, let's just call it H3O plus, catalytic, will form the aminium ion and the Monash reaction will take place. And this will give us the beta amino ketone synthetic intermediate. I'm going to leave out stereochemistry since even though this reaction does form a stereocenter, it does so in a racemic way. So this is a racemic synthesis, which is honestly totally fine for our purposes. We could think about using a chiral catalyst, for example, a chiral phosphoric acid, if we wanted to do this enantioselectively. And what we'd like to do with this is combine this ultimately with the nucleophile, the corresponding Grignard reagent, to give tramadol after acidic workup. So to show this, I'm going to go ahead and draw out that Grignard reagent that we'd like to make. And let's just say first we treat with that, and then secondly we use acidic workup, and this gives tramadol as the final product. But of course, we have to synthesize this Grignard reagent as well. To do that, let's go back to our metabromophenol starting material. From this, we first want to form the methyl ether. We can do that by deprotonating completely with something like sodium hydride, followed by methyl iodide. This is just the Williamson ether synthesis, an SN2 reaction. To convert this aryl bromide into the corresponding Grignard reagent, all we need to do is treat the aryl bromide with magnesium metal, and this is often done in diethyl ether as solvent. And we've done it, and notice that we've used a lot of the reactions that we've seen over the past several units. We used a Monash reaction to establish a beta amino ketone. We used a Grignard reaction to establish a key tertiary alcohol in the final target. And we even took it all the way back to ethers using a Williamson ether synthesis to install a methyl ether in the aromatic starting material. 